Hi, and welcome to Retro Eric. This is just a quick video showing you a few things that I acquired uh, the last few weeks, and also to let you know that I'm uh, still alive, although it has been a few weeks since the last video I published. But uh, don't uh, fear, uh, I'm still here, and I will continue making videos um, when I find the time. So, let's uh, dive into it. What do we have here? Well, uh, I uh, found this uh, fancy screwdriver on uh, AliExpress. So, um, can't remember how much I paid for it, but uh, not too much uh, since it was AliExpress. And um, I like uh, like the look of it in the ad, so I bought it, and it's an electric uh, screwdriver. It has a light, and you can choose the speed, and you can charge it with a USB-C charger. So I've tried it out uh, just a few times, and it uh, works. It looks okay. These bits, of course, fits uh, fine in the holder and as far as I can tell the bits uh, are strong enough so uh, I think I will enjoy this uh, for many years to come at least I hope so the casing it uh, comes in it's uh, good quality it's all magnetized so these bits stay in their uh, places and there's a lot of bits to choose from so I think uh, this will make do. The kit uh, fits into this uh, metal holder. It feels like very good quality. And when I click it in place, did you hear that? It clicks into place. And when I want to release it, I just uh, give it a notch and then it pops out. So, so far I'm happy. It also came with uh, a lot of extra tools, like this uh, magnetizer and demagnetizer. Uh, always good to have, and it has some uh, extra tools here. Uh, this was longer than the one I had before. Uh, I don't know what this is called in English. It's not pliers, but uh, anyway, you know what it is. And we have this. Uh, these uh, prying tools plastic always good to have some uh, prying tools I have some prying tools uh, from before that I use actually quite a lot here is one of them but as you can see this is a lot bigger so it's uh, handy to have some small prying tools also this is also some sort of prying tool but I don't really know if that is the correct term for this one it's in metal that reminds me uh, before uh, I knew even knew the term prime tools I uh, had this you can see this is a bracket on a ESA or PCI slot on well both new and old computers and this is the method I've been using uh, well probably since the 90s to pry out stuff and it has worked very good for me also at the, at the other end uh, of this uh, bracket I have um, uh, a knob you know this filled knobs that you put on the furniture furnitures uh, so it doesn't uh, make marks when you move the chair for instance well this is uh, how I clean um, floppy drive heads just put some alcohol or something similar like that and I just give it a rub and uh, I've used this for a long time of course I replace the felt knob from time to time but uh, the principle is the same and my bracket is the same but um, this is not the only thing I've received lately I um, if you remember I had a Commodore or two Commodore 64s that I repaired and the PLA chip in one of them uh, did not work 
So I have uh, acquired this replacement PLA. Nothing much to make a video about, but now I have it and I can uh, put it in the Commodore 64 that needs it. Also, I got this kit. I think I'm gonna spend some quality time with my Amiga 500 in the next two weeks, give it a bit of an upgrade, maybe uh, install the newest uh, Flash uh, floppy, no, what is it called? The Flash floppy firmware, yeah, I think that is what it's called, from Keith uh, Fraser. Anyway, uh, I'm gonna move the, the controller knob and the OLED screen on top of the Amiga 500, so I can actually see what the screen, uh, the OLED screen says. So I'm looking forward to that. I think this was the best solution out there. I googled a lot and I think this is what will look okay and it will be practical to use. Next out, I bought this. It's a stand display stand what does it say retro booter display stand it's in plastic and it's to display my nintendo game boy okay let's see how does this work maybe i should look at the instructions Okay, uh, ah, um, there's some plastic on top, so let's uh, peel that off. Oh yeah, ooh, this was so much nicer. And I peeled the plastic of these. Okay, it says here, if it's too tight, try the other way around, so let me do that. Oh yeah, that actually worked. Maybe I should uh, start reading instructions more often. Wow. Okay. This uh, looks good. Let me find myself a Game Boy. Oh, yes. That looks okay. Nice. Goodie. One last thing to show you before we end this video. Ooh, you see here, I have received uh, a box from uh, Serge in Sarna shop with all kinds of goodies. So what we have here, we have a MPU uh, 232. So this is uh, Something I will uh, need in my next video. It's basically RS-232 uh, or communication port or COM port to MIDI and some uh, power there from the USB. So this is going to be used in my new video. And we have a DB15 doubler. So uh, by connecting one end to the uh, joystick port or the MIDI port on sound cards, uh, you get two ports. And this is good if you want to use one for joystick or and the other for, for instance, MIDI out. Um, there we have a gamepad, a DB15. So this is basically converting the analog joystick signal from the DB15 to a digital Atari style DB9 port. I really look forward to testing that one. I also need soldering. I love uh, I love soldering. So this is gonna be nice. This uh, DB15 MIDI. Uh, you connect this to your sound card and you get MIDI out. If I'm not mistaken, you will get two MIDI out on this. And last, but not least, the best for the last, as always, well at least sometimes, we have the V 
P32 Mac Cake. So this is a MT32 um, emulator, also a general MIDI and uh, what's it called? Not MT32 but CM32 uh, also. And I'll really look forward to trying this. This um, is very much the same as the MP32L. You have uh, maybe seen my video on that. Uh, the big difference is that uh, this does not use the Raspberry Pi um, 3 Plus or something like that. This used the Raspberry Pi, what is it called? One. Um, it says probably here. Uh, Raspberry Pi. Mm. This can be plugged directly onto the sound card if you have a wavetable header. So I will uh, be back with a long video about this where we'll explore all the possibilities. So that um, basically wraps it up uh, for this short status video from me. I hope you uh, tune back to my channel later to check out uh, my new and older videos. Oh, uh, sorry, I almost forgot. I have a Christmas present from my wife. Um, she, every year she buys the best Christmas present. She really knows me. So she found this piece of hardware. It's a Colormate Deluxe. It's a Pong clone with uh, four games. Uh, basically four different or three different versions of, uh, of Pong. They call it Tenors and uh, Peluta Squash and Soccer. And it also have a gun mode. But sadly, uh, the gun was not in the package. I have connected it to a TV, uh, to the RF or the antenna input, and it works perfectly. It actually amazed me how good it was working. These controllers, for instance, we can take them off. They were re they are really tight, and 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 when you move it, the pad on the screen is just super tight. It doesn't jump up and down as other pong clones uh, often do. I'm gonna make a video about this because there are, as far as I could uh, Google. There are no other videos on the Colormate Deluxe on YouTube, so I will make one. We will uh, peel off the plastic. You see, it's never been uh, touched. Also here, we see the plastic. So we will peel off that. We will try the games. We will open it up and have a look inside and maybe also do some recapping if necessary. So, with that, I think we can end this uh, video. I uh, hope you enjoyed it and see you in my next video.